Welcome to Pick Up and Deliver, the podcast where I pick up my audio recorder as I leave the library and deliver an episode to you while I walk home. I'm Brendan Riley. Well, good morning, listeners. It's a lovely day here in suburban Chicago. I just got done with a trip to the dentist. Ugh. For the first half of getting a crown, Ugh. Uh, I'll have to go back in a couple weeks to get the actual crown fitted on there. Until then, I'm riding around with half a half of a tooth. I complain, but my dentist is amazing, so I'm really glad to have somebody who cares a lot about comfort as part of their treatment plan. So, no complaints from me regarding my dental experience today. What I do want to do is complain. No, I'm not going to complain. What I do want to do is share a little bit about the games I've been playing recently. That's right, that's right it's time for another Board Game Espresso, triple shot. Uh, the Board Game Espresso triple shot is a light review segment in which I talk about games I've played for the first time recently and what I think of them. This is not a formal, these are not formal reviews, the main issue being that I haven't played these games enough to give them a formal review. But it is enough to give them a, give you a little taste, a little soupçon of enjoyment based on my experience playing the game. And that's what I'm gonna do. So let's jump right into it. Uh, the first game that I wanted to talk about today is Dream House, or Dream Home. Dream Home is a game that I picked up on, I picked up at a, a Goodwill for $3. So uh, pretty simple gamble. And the idea is that you are building a house. It is a drafting game where you have these different cards that will go onto these player mats that look like houses. And then you use those player mats to build your house, and then you enjoy the house that you've built. Uh, you get points for the different kinds of rooms that you acquire and where you put them in the house. There are some rules that prevent you from putting things in different places, and some bonuses that you get if you get the right combination of different elements. So it's a pretty simple game as far as these things go. It's definitely meant for families. The art is very cutesy, but thoughtful. It does look maybe computer generated. It's in the sort of in the style of Up, uh, the uh, sort of rounded edges and uh, nice warm lighting. Um, it's a, it's cute. It's fine. It's not particularly compelling. Imagine if you had little kids who really liked the theme, they would enjoy that. But for us, it just was, uh, it fell a bit flat. It falls into the category of, I'm happy to have played it once. I don't feel like I need to play it again. The designer is Clemens Kalicki and the publisher is Rebel. I guess I'd say worth a try if you have a friend who really likes it and wants to try it with, play it with you, but pretty pedestrian as far as all things go. That's Dream Home from 2016. Uh, the next game I want to talk about is called Medieval Academy. Uh, Medieval Academy was published in 2014. Uh, the designer is Nicolas Ponsi, and it's uh, published by Blue Cocker Games, which is a game design company that I have enjoyed their things. In particular, they published Welcome To, which is a favorite of ours. In Medieval Academy, which actually I think yellow is on the box that I have, so I don't know if Blue Cocker had to deal with them or what. Uh, in this game, you play squires and you're trying to acquire skills to become uh, better medieval knights. The theme is relatively right, but basically it is a card drafting game. So you're drafting cards, and then once you've got all your cards drafted, then you're going to play them in order to move your marker up on these various tracks on the board. There's maybe like five or six different cards that you score on, and three of them are going to score two or three times during the game, and two or three of them are going to score once during the game. So part of what you're doing is sort of moderating where do you want to put your energy to try to score, and each one has a slightly different set of scoring conditions and slightly different kinds of things that it does to give you sort of room to score. So it's about managing expectations and balancing effort. Uh, the scoring tiles are double-sided, so, and I think there's a couple more than the, tw the six you use. So the game comes with quite a bit of variety in terms of how the scoring works. We did enjoy our play of it. It seems like it's a good filler, something I would enjoy getting out from time to time. It's not amazing, but it'll stay in the collection for a while. Uh, the art is fun, kind of light, goofy art in the style of maybe Gru, if you know that comic strip. Not quite as scratchy, 
a little more polished, but that kind of fun, silly style. Um, we had a good time with it. If you get a chance to check it out, especially I got it for, I think, 16 at Half Price Books, and that felt, I don't feel like I've overpaid for that. If you get a chance to try it out or pick it up for less than that, yeah, pretty good. Might as well give it a try. That's Medieval Academy. Well, the next game I want to talk about is one that already had earned its spot in my estimation because this is my Dust It Off game. For those of you new to the podcast, the, in the Board Game Espresso episodes, I will often include something I call a Dusty game, which is a game I haven't played for a year or more. The idea being it has sat on the shelf so long it's gotten dusty. So an Out of the Dust game is one that I haven't played for a year or more, and I'm now playing it again. Uh, this one I brought with me to my college board game society where people said that they wanted to try some different fun games, and this one was a perfect one for that. Uh, it's called uh, Potion Explosion. Uh, the designer, there's a couple of them, Stefano Castelli, Andrea Crespi, and Lorenzo Silva. Uh, these are, at the time it was published by Horrible Guild, I believe they called uh, that's the current publication name for the game. It used to be called Horrible Games, and then they realized that was a dumb thing to name your game company. Uh, this game is a sort of lightly inspired by those match three games like Bejeweled, where you have a series of shiny things that you want to pair up. The way Potion Explosion works, you have this tray of marbles, and on your turn you can take a marble out of the tray. If when you take a marble out of the tray, the marbles that roll down from the track that you took it from, the marble that rolls down touches another marble of the same color, then the two marbles that just collided and all of the rest of them that are adjacent to that marble of that color, you get to collect. Then, as the now empty space is filled by the marbles rolling down, if the lead marble that's rolling down touches another marble that is its own color, you collect all those as well. So, with a thoughtful pull of a marble, you actually can get a whole bunch of marbles. However, what you're doing with these marbles is you're putting them into these cardboard uh, tiles that look like potions, and each potion has sort of requirements for a different amount of marbles of different colors. So what you're doing is collecting these marbles in different colors so you can complete potions. And the potions give you two things. They give you points, but then each potion also has a special power, and you can use the power immediately this is one of my favorite parts of this game. I think a lot of designers would be tempted to give the power a cost to make it so you can use the power, but you know, you lose, it's worth more points if you don't. In this game, that's not the case. You don't gain anything from holding on to the power that you get from the potion. So you might as well use it, which is great because it amplifies and accelerates the game in really delightful ways. Yeah, if you haven't played Potion Explosion, it's well worth checking out. There are two other ways to score or there's one other way to score points as well, other than completing potions. Uh, there are also these achievement ribbons, and you can earn an achievement ribbon by making three potions of the same type or five potions of different types. Uh, and then if you make three potions of another type, you can get another ribbon. So you could get a bunch of different ribbons. The game generally has a number of ribbons equal to maybe the number of players plus two or something. And you put those out, and when all the ribbons are gone, then everybody gets one more turn and the game's over. Finally, there is uh, a thing that I think a lot of inexperienced, inexperienced players don't use, but really they should, which are the learning bonuses. So the idea is this is a school where you're learning to make potions, so there's a professor. You can ask the professor for help, and what that does is it gives you a negative one point or a negative two point token, and then you can draw one marble out of the tray and put that marble in your potions, and then uh, it does, when you draw that marble out, it doesn't cause the chain reaction. The advantage to this is if you have, a lot of times there's a great chain reaction that's been set up, but it's interfered with by one marble. So using the lesson can let you pull the one marble out of the way so that you have a great, trend, a great chain reaction to use. Uh, basically, when I am playing this game, I pretty much never hesitate to use one of those lessons, unless I'm sure that I'm getting enough potion, enough marbles, that I can complete both potions that I have. Because the other limitation on your progress during the game is that you can only have two potions that you're working on at a time, and you don't get to refill those until your turn is over. So you can only complete two per potions per turn. And if you're good at this game, 
you really need to be completing at one at least one every turn and you should be completing two on many turns that's potion explosion a really excellent game from 2015 from horrible guild check it out if you get a chance the app is also very good by the way all right the last game i want to discuss in my uh, board game espresso episode today is forest shuffle forest shuffle is a card game uh, designed by kosh k-o-s-c-h published by lookout games uh, and it was very well received in 2023 when it was published. Uh, I have not played this one on the table yet. I've in fact played it only twice digitally, but I feel like I got enough of the hang of it that I kind of understand what it's doing and I can talk about it a little bit. I often don't review games that I've only played on Board Game Arena once or twice because unless I'm playing them in real time, playing them asynchronously does not feel like the same as playing them in person and I just want to make sure that I'm uh, giving the game a fair shake. So Forest Shuffle is a tableau builder where you are gaining points by establishing cards. The idea is that you're building a forest, I know you're surprised there, uh, from a series of cards that you have and over the course of your turns you play trees and then you play different animals and plants around those trees and then at the end of the game, you score points based on which animals and plants you played. The game uses the race for the galaxy mechanism of giving you cards that do lots of different things, or the race for the galaxy mechanism of giving you cards to, that all do something, but then also requiring that for you to play cards, you have to pay cards. Uh, in case that was unclear, when you have a card and you want to play it, you then have to pay cards by discarding them in order to play the card you got. So you're constantly like drawing more cards with the goal of being able to play, say, one of the cards in your hand, but then you discover that, in fact, the card you've drawn is now better than the one that was in your hand, and now you're stuck trying to figure out, well, how do I play both, or do I pick one to play? And it's sort of a constant back and forth struggle of how do I get, how do I maximize the score or maximize the quality of my tableau especially given that I have to keep discarding cards in order to play cards. Uh, it's a really delicious tension and it does remind me of Race for the Galaxy in that way. You're trying to build up your tempo and your engine so that you can uh, get things played uh, without having to give up too many cards that you want. The first couple rounds of it, I did not do very well. I felt like the other people had a better grasp on how to build those engines, but I can recognize something making it a really high quality game. And I think it's definitely gonna be worth pursuing um, as the discussion com comes along. So I'm looking forward to trying that more. Well, that's about it for my games for you to listen to today. Uh, these are three games I tried recently and I enjoyed quite a bit, uh, plus one that I dusted off. And I hope that you enjoyed listening to me talk about them and are looking forward to trying them yourself. If you'd like to share your thoughts on these games, something I missed, something I should know about them, or perhaps you have new games you've tried and you'd like to share that information with me, you can do so by heading over to Board Game Geek Guild 3269, where we'll be looking for your comments, where I would love to hear what you have to say about those games or any comments that you have for me. Well, thanks for joining me on my walk today. I hope that your next walk is as pleasant as mine was. Bye-bye. Brought to you by Rattlebox Games.